Good evening, everyone. I'm going to zero in on something that we come across daily, but we don't tend to utilize that information a lot. And that's how to read food labels. All right, so I'm going to give us a brief introduction on what to expect on a food label. All right, so there are several th things on a food label. You have a statement of identity, the net weight, the name of the business or distributor or company, manufacturer, and also there is the nutrition facts. The statement of identity basically describes the product and it gives a common name of the food. So if we look at this picture, we can see that this is plain yogurt, low fat, and this is a cereal, Lucky Charms. So right there, we're seeing the identity of the product. And if you look at these, we're seeing that this is cream cheese and that's a granola bar. So basically, it just gives us an idea of what exactly the product is. Another thing on a food label is the net weight. And the net weight basically tells us the overall content of the food item. So whatever is in the container. So on this milk bottle you can see that it's half gallon or 1.89 liters. All right, and on this tin of peas or beans, we can see that it's 15 ounces or 425 grams. So it basically gives us an overall idea of the overall content within the food package. All right, another element of the food label is the ingredient list. Now, for the ingredients, it normally lists the first one as the largest content weight. So anything that comes first in the list, it is the largest content weight. Therefore, the product has most of that item. So for example, we see these three lists. Which one do you think has the largest ingredient by weight? Sugar as the largest, that is. So we see the first one saying wheat flour, then whole oat flour, etc. The second one, second one starts with sugar, whole grain flour, wheat flour, etc. And the third one starts with water, vegetable oils, etc. So which one do you think would list sugar as the largest ingredient by weight? Of course, it would be the second one because it's listed first. So basically, you can know which content is the most in an item just by looking at the ingredients list because it's listed first. And that's the order of which they um, are in the product. All right. So... Another aspect of the food label is showing the allergens. And you know, persons are allergic to certain stuff, most likely milk and nuts and eggs, certain dairy products, right? So in, in the ingredients list, sometimes it's listed there to specify what type of flour, wheat flour, and sometimes you see liquid albumin or egg, and you'll see milk. And sometimes it is in a statement by itself where it says may contain nuts or egg, wheat, milk, and so on. So therefore, you purchasing this item, you will know that, okay, this is what it contains and it was made in a factory that processes nuts, etc. to guide your decision on purchasing that item. All right, and another part of it, it gives you the name and business place. So basically distributed by whom and manufactured by whom, whatever information, it's also there with the country of origin. So it can be a product of Jamaica, a product of Italy, a product of China. All right, and of course, we know about the expiry date. So we can know what's the best time to eat this food item, all right, when it's very fresh. Now, a very important part that is included on the label as well is the nutrition facts. And I'm just going to zero in on that. Of course, it is uh, redesigned now. It used to look like this before. And now it looks like that based on the picture. All right. So it's just to help us to see clearly what the food item contains. 
Now, uh, an important part of the nutrition facts label is the servings. Now, the serving size tells us how much should be eaten at any one time. Now, the other values on the food label depend on the serving size. So, for example, I'm going to show you how it works. Alright, let's start with something to drink. Alright, so how about orange juice, for example? We want to know what's on the label first and foremost. So, you probably won't see it. But it would look something like what's on our screen. Alright, so this says about two servings per container. And it also says serving size is 8 fluid ounces or 240 mils. Now, what does that mean? It means that a serving is 8 ounces. And that the nutrition information that's listed here would apply to the 8 ounces. So, 8 ounces of this orange juice contains 110 calories. 15 milligrams sodium, 28 grams total carbohydrates, and that's divided um, with the total sugars, added sugars, and the protein is also there. Now, if I wanted to have one serving of this, what would I do? Let me show you. Alright, so I'm going to open this. So in order to know what one serving is, we have to measure it out, right? So let's say we have a measuring tool here and one serving is 8 fluid ounces. I would use the ounces section of my tool. Alright, and then I would pour it into my cup. All right, so that right there would be one serving of orange juice. And I still have some left because this container has two servings. So now in this cup, I'm going to be having 110 calories, 15 milligrams sodium, 28 grams of carbohydrate, and less than one grams protein. Now, if I decided to have the entire box of orange juice, then I would have to multiply everything on the um, nutrition label by two because it has two servings so it would be 110 multiplied by two all right 220 calories therefore that would double the sugar amount the carbohydrate protein etc all that's listed here all right i hope we understand that so basically this is my one serving of orange juice and then i can have the next serving later on all right okay so with that said we discovered that there are other things listed below the serving size which are the nutrients and back to the slide nutrients listed would be the rest of items so you see total fat cholesterol sodium total carbohydrate now it has a percentage beside it and that is the percent daily value and it's always on the right side now it shows the percentage of the nutrient that you would eat um, based on a 2000 kilocalorie diet so basically everybody doesn't need a 2000 kilocalorie diet but it's just a standard that they go by so what would happen is we're looking for the rule. So if 20% or more of the daily value would be considered as high. So let me give you an example. So if we see total fat 15%, then we would know that would be in the, the center. So 20% or more would be considered high, 5% or less would be considered low. In between that would be you know just right so we would go for this product and it depends on what nutritional goals you are looking for or whatever you're looking to buy so if you want something low in fat you would look at the daily value percentage to see if it's ranging high 
medium or low which you would want it to be low if you're looking for something low in fat and it goes on with the sugar as well now in the fat area there are different breakdowns so you would have total fat 12 grams and the saturated fat trans fat is on this label now these ones you would consider as the bad fat these are the bad cholesterol then these raise your LDLs, all right, low density lipoproteins. And you want to look out for those for some healthy ranges in those. So these, if eaten at high levels, will increase your risk for heart disease and certain illnesses that you really don't want to have. So you would look out for it in the high fat meat and the dairy products and other prepackaged foods. Okay. And trans fats would be basically the fats that are listed in the ingredients. You normally see it in hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Once it has that word, you know that trans fat is present. So that's basically a synopsis on how to use food labels. And you can also use it with your snacks as well or whatever food items you have. So... It's similar for this cracker, pack of crackers, 120 calories, and a serving is 8 crackers. So basically, I would take out 8 crackers, and I would get the 120 calories and all the other nutrients listed in their amounts. So it's just to read the label, basically, and find out what the serving is, and then you can multiply it by 1, 2, or 3, depending on how many the package contains all right so hopefully we can utilize that information to help us to choose our food wisely or to eat in correct portions daily thank you for listening and you can try this at home